always pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, how important is it for evangelists to do that? That is extremely important. I uh, uh, think back of the very first crusade mm -hmm. I had when I launched out. Mm -hmm. um, I had just founded Christ for the Nations and I went to uh, uh, Gaborones mm -hmm. in uh, Botswana. You know, and uh, by a miracle that stadium was packed with people. Uh, we saw, for the first time I saw uh, thousands of people getting saved. 3,000 per night. That was for me something so unusual. And then one day the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, tomorrow pray for the baptism and the Holy Spirit in the stadium. I said, Lord, this is not for a stadium meeting. This is for a prayer meeting. That's how, how I, what I had learned from others. This was not for a stadium. Uh, and the Lord said, gave me the reason why he wanted me to pray for the baptism in the Holy Spirit in the stadium. He said, because in the last days, I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh. I suddenly realized there is so much flesh around. There are not enough prayer meetings and enough churches, not even enough stadiums for God to do that. Well, if he wants the spirit to fall on all flesh, it has to be a huge place. I said, okay, Lord, okay, Lord, okay, Lord, I will, I will do it. And I stood up and I said, tomorrow you're going to see something you have never seen in your life. The Holy Spirit is going to come down right here in the middle of this stadium. I didn't tell them that I hadn't seen it either, <laughs> but I knew I was prophesying. The next day we had capacity crowd. I mean, it was full, 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 full. Um, uh, a teaching was given by somebody else about the baptism in the Holy Spirit and that somebody else had forgotten to mention a single word of the new tongues, the language of the Holy Spirit. And I was not happy. So I thought I, I, I had been the, in charge of that whole thing. I, I can always push something in. And the Lord said to me, leave it to me. Oh, I said, okay. So then I said, how many of you want to receive this gift? you've just heard about. They all wanted it. I called them forward. And then I said, okay, close your eyes and lift your hands. And they did that. I said, Lord, that's all I know. You've got to step in now. I told the people, close your eyes, lift your hands. I kept my eyes open because I wanted to see what was about to unfold. And then the Holy Spirit came. I was the only one who saw it. It must have been a vision. It was a huge wave that moved in from my left side. A wave hundreds of meters high. Such a sparkling living water and it very slowly moved across the stadium, very slowly. And as I saw, saw it move across the stadium and touch the people, they all fell on their backs. And then I couldn't believe my ears. They all prayed in new languages as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. I stood there, Tamarin. I wept like a little boy. I cried, my God, my God, my God, is it possible? Is it possible? And then the Lord said, yes, it is possible. I realized one thing. Having seen a blood-washed Africa from Cape Town to Cairo, I realized that can only come about through a massive outpouring of the Holy Spirit. A massive outpouring of the Holy Spirit alone will break the devil's back 
whether it's Africa or Europe or America or Asia or Australia or anywhere. And since that day, God had laid the pattern out for me. I still follow it until today and I encourage other evangelists to do the same. This is extremely important from God's side. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you, Tamara. We Tamar. appreciate your time. I could go all day. <laughs>